yes, yes, here, here. Oh, hello, I didn't see you there. Huh. I think we should learn a little bit about the law of signs ambiguous case. What do you think? I think so, it's time for math with Mr. Troy. All right, here we go. Okay, so what given information will I... Hey, hey, what am I doing? Hey. That's better. <laughs> all right, what given information do all of these triangles have in common? Well, look at the given information that you see there. You see an angle. You see a side. You see a side. Now, wait a minute. Side, side, angle. Well, what do you remember about side, side, angle from geometry class? It's not a congruence theorem, they all say in unison. Now, do you remember why side, side, angle isn't a congruence theorem, I wonder? Well, let me take this angle and this side and this third side, or second side, I suppose, and make a triangle. Okay, so I've got a 30 degree angle, I've got the blue side which is a certain length, and I've got the black side which is another given length. Well, what would happen if I took that same side, but instead of pushing it out towards the right there, I pushed it towards the left? I think it would look a little bit like this. Aha! The exact same measurements, but two different triangles. Side-side angle isn't a congruence theorem because that information is not enough to guarantee that you get a particular triangle. So let's try a problem using the law of signs and let's see if we can figure out where this ambiguity comes from. I'm told that there is a triangle that has a side of 3, a side of 7, and a 22 degree angle and I'm asked to figure out the measurements of all of the other sides and angles. So there would be two angles and one remaining side. Since I'm not guaranteed this is a right triangle, I can't just use Sokotoa, but since I have side A and angle A, I would jump in and use the law of signs because I know I can set up a proportion. The first thing you wanna do is to draw the triangle. So what I have here is I have a triangle drawn, and I just want you to look at it and see if you think that it's proportional. Well, it's not perfect. Is there a way that we could better visualize this picture? Okay, so I've gone to GeoGebra to visualize this situation. I made myself a 22 degree angle and a segment that was seven units long. If you want to learn how to do this, it's, it's really fun and really cool. Uh, totally check it out. Now, I am now going to construct a segment that is three units long. When I do this, as I move it, see how it's keeping its same length? You can see that there are two different places that I could attach it. I could attach it there and make a triangle that goes 22, 7, 3. Or I could attach it here and make a triangle that goes 22, 7, 3. That sort of setup is called the law of signs ambiguous case because there are two different triangles that can be made with the given information. All of the markup on this figure makes it a little bit obscure to see. It obscures it just a little bit. But what you can see is if you draw in both of those segments and you see the two different triangles that you can make, the larger one that you could see or this triangle, so two different triangles that you can see, they have some things in common, the 22, the 7, and the 3, but they have other things that are not in common. 
Another thing that you might notice is this isosceles triangle right here. This one looks almost equilateral, but it's supposed to be an isosceles triangle. It's, of course, possible that it could be an equilateral triangle. Back to the problem. So before I just tell you how to figure out um, if there are two triangles, uh, I, I want you to kind of think about how you would work your way through this problem. So we would start and we would say, oh, A and A. So I'm going to do the sine of 22 degrees over 3 equals the sine of B over 7. And I'm going to cross multiply and I'm going to say 7 times the sine of 22 over 3 equals the sine of B. I'm going to punch that into my calculator and then I'm going to stop. So I got 0 0.8741 is the sine of B. But here's the thing. There are two angles uh, between 0 and 180, so think of triangle angles, that have a sine of 0 0.8741. Now, the reason I said to stop here is because normally you would go into your calculator and you would say, okay, the sine inverse of 0 0.8741 is something that my calculator can tell me, and that must be B, right? Well, let's see what happens when we plug that into our calculator. When I plug that into my calculator, I get that 60.9 degrees has a sine of 0.874. But here is where the problem exists. So does 119.1. If you don't believe me, plug in the sine of 119.1 and you will get just about 0.8741. All right, here's a brief tangent. Just because the calculator tells you that something is a solution to your problem doesn't mean that it's the only solution to your problem. Keep that in mind as you're doing math. So here's the way this problem works if you're not paying attention. If you're not paying attention, you say, okay, I got 22 and 3 and 7, those were givens. I just got 60.9 out of my calculator. And since, you know, triangles, angles add up to 180 degrees, I guess that means that my last angle has to be 97.1. Now I could do the law of sines and I can say, oh, okay, so the sine of 97.1 over C equals the sine of, you know, I'll use A to be careful, sine of 22 over 3, because that's the one that's given to me. I know I'm not rounding. And I work that out, and I figure out that C is about 7.95. And I say to myself, ha, 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 I can pat myself on the back because my smallest side is across from my smallest angle, my middlest side is across from my middlest angle, and my largest side is across from my largest angle. Job well done, Mr. Troy. But here's the problem in the problem. There is no reason that we couldn't use that angle that we found from before to make a triangle. Here's what I mean. I also know that 119.1 has a sine of 0.8741. So this problem
side, side, setup. But some people have trouble just looking at these letters and visualizing a triangle. So if you're the sort of person who has trouble visualizing or has trouble drawing the picture, say to yourself, if the first thing that I found was an angle in a setup like this, look out for the ambiguous case. Now, how did I know that it was 119.1? Well, let's take a look at signs for a second. Remember when we were doing the unit circle, I told you a while back that an angle's sign was its y coordinate. Well, that means I'm looking for something that has a y coordinate of 0.8741, just from this problem. And I found that that was like almost 61 degrees. But here's the issue. There is another angle that has that same y coordinate. There's another angle that has that same sign. So, the reason this is called the ambiguous case is because you don't know if the triangle you're talking about has this angle B, or if it has this angle B. Now, to figure out the other angle, you'll notice my angles were 60.9 and 119.1. They just share the same reference angle. So you have to do the angle that pops out of your calculator and you have to consider 180 degrees minus the angle that pops out of your calculator. That's the key to understanding the ambiguous case. So on a problem that fits into the ambiguous case, if there are two possible triangles, you would need to record both of those possible triangles uh, to have constructed or have solved all of the triangles that could possibly come out of that given information. For those of you who love a good formula, there is a way to figure out ahead of time uh, what sort of situation you're going to be in. Okay, so here's what you do. You calculate the height of your triangle by doing B times the sine of A. So. Um, that would be B up here and the sine of angle A, and that would tell you the height of that triangle. If the side you're given is shorter than that, then you won't have a triangle. Now this will come out as a calculator error, so you don't need to worry about that. If the side is just perfect, you would have one triangle. If A is the larger of the two sides between A and B, you won't be able to have another side there. The issue is when A is bigger than H, but smaller than B, okay? So if you are the sort of person who uh, loves every formula you've ever seen, that's how you would wanna look at it, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna leave you with a challenge. Uh, I want you to figure out how many triangles would be here. Uh, try using your notes, using the last slide to work through that H deal and figure out if that's something that's going to work for you. Okay, and we can go over the answers to this in class. All right, gang, thanks for hanging tight there. I know it's been a really trying couple of weeks, but you guys are performing miraculously and we will see this through. Okay, I will see you in the Google Meet bright and early. Well, bright and early for a teenager in the middle of a pandemic. Am I right? All right, hang in there.